Could you cook paddock to plate? In this series, we're gonna go over some fundamentals to growing food at home. Some good things to consider before starting include water, soil, sun, time, climate, and seasons. In this first episode, I'm gonna go through five ways you can improve water retention in your soil. So, let's get into it. Okay, so I live in Australia and water management is a serious issue here. That's because it might not rain for months or even years at a time. And when it does rain, it tends to flood. And that's because the ground is so hard and dry that the water just hits it and runs straight off rather than soaking in. What this means is we need to find ways to improve water retention in the soil. One way we can do that is by including biomass or organic matter into the ground, which is things that used to be alive that will actually break down. That's things like compost, manures, green waste, that sort of thing. What that does is put life into the ground and is the difference between soil and dirt. If you can get water to soak into the ground, the next issue is keeping it there. Our Australian summers are incredibly harsh and the temperature can hover around 40 degrees Celsius during the day. In those kind of conditions, any moisture in the soil will evaporate in seconds. So tip number two is use mulch. This acts as a shield from the sun and traps any moisture underneath. Mulch breaks down over time into the soil, helping water retention even further. It even stops weeds coming through underneath, so it won't take long until you're pretty weirdly passionate about mulch. <laughs> On a hot day, you tend to drink a lot of water, right? Well, tip number three is consistent watering of your plants. In the middle of summer, one drink can be the difference between life and death for your plants. So, you need to have a pretty strict watering routine. Or, invest in some irrigation and a timer. When you set this up, you can go away for a week and not worry about coming home to a plant graveyard. Okay, just briefly, another great way to ensure consistent watering is wicking beds. I'm going to have a video dedicating to building one of these and I'll go into way more detail on how it all works. But basically, it's just a watertight container half filled with rocks. Above that we have the soil and below that we fill it with water. What that means is the plants can suck up as much water as they need when they need it, but it stops any evaporation and runoff and things like that. This means you might only have to fill it up once every week or two, rather than having to water once or twice a day in the middle of summer. It is harder to grow food in containers, but these are a great option if you don't have any space. Ask any boomer and they will tell you there is no school like the old school. Well, this irrigation trick is thousands of years old. So tip number four is use oyers. This is basically just an unglazed clay pot. Unglazed terracotta is porous, so that allows the water to slowly seep through. So we just bury these in the ground, leaving a little bit at the top so we can fill them up easily. You also want the hole covered so nothing makes its home inside. By doing this, the soil will soak up as much water as it needs to. If it's already soaked, the water will stay in the pot. If you don't have irrigation, this is a great way to reduce the amount of times you need to water. If you do have irrigation, you can just implement this into your system. And again, that will just reduce the amount of times that you need to irrigate. Okay, so tip number five is use rainwater. There is really no substitute for rainwater. It's the most nutritious for your plants and it's the most sustainable way to irrigate. So collect as much as you can, however you can, when it does rain. You can do things like buy a rainwater tank or shape your land so it funnels the water into the ground rather than having it run off. So you can use trenches or swales, use a dam, um, put buckets underneath rainwater pipes, things like that. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Let me know what your best watering tip is down in the comments below. Hit subscribe if you wanna see the next upcoming paddock to plate tutorial where we're gonna take a look at soil. Finally, I'm Dylan and thanks for watching.